Thank you. Uh, when we got to the eighth grade, we were sent down to uh, Wayland High School to take our uh, examinations or regents exams. We passed and we became a member of the high school gang the next year. Well, that's the way things went down here. But this go back when we started in the, in the uh, Punky Hollow School. Uh, you didn't have any phys ed teacher to get to your exercise, so you invented it. And uh, we, we all got plenty of exercise. We had across, you know, can't see it here anymore, but there was a steep cliff going down the side of the valley and there was a cleared field that's now reforested. Uh, the snow used to blow across there like crazy in the wintertime and put a, a real cliff of snow there that we kids walked out to see how far we could get before it busted off and we all ended up down the road. <laughs> and uh, we'd come back to school, you know, and sometimes we had to be put around the snow to throw our clothes out of the way. But that was one, one of the education experiences. Another one, after we'd come to school, you know, it was only about two weeks and we got let out for vacation. Only the vacation was to go work, pick potatoes, <laughs> fill your silo, whatever you had to do. And uh, part of this education was during World War II when help wasn't too plentiful. So we kids had to pick potatoes and fill in and our family were potato growers, so we had all the work we could handle. And uh, it gave the, the kids a chance to earn a few bucks and helped out uh, getting clothes and good footwear and so forth for winter. And I don't know if it hurt us any. It taught us a little bit about money management. And uh, that's good education in itself. So, we had educational experiences, but they weren't all out of the textbook. <laughs> As we got uh, along later in uh, the school, there's several things that I think about every once in a while that are experiences that I observed, but I uh, don't know whether the others did or not. There used to be a long shed on the right-hand side of this valley that uh, belonged to the Ladies' Aid Society. And in one end, uh, the picnic tables and benches for the old home day were held. And the old home day was in the lawn of the Charles Cook residence just down over the hill. Uh, the rest of the shed, much of it was rented to the uh, town highway department. And they stored snow fence in it. Well. I remember one experience, you know, you're in there supposed to be paying attention to what's going on in school, but uh, they'd set up a dump truck, one of the big ones, jack up one wheel a little bit, put a belt around it, and run a buzzsaw, and they sharpened their posts that way. And that was rather amusing to me, but it worked. <laughs> and Doc Walker was one of the family of people that worked for the highway department, and there used to be one of his chores that were falling. And these roads had snow fences on them to help control the drifts. That was, they didn't have quite a sophisticated plowing equipment back at that time. Now, while I was in school here, I think it was long about uh, 1936, we had a terrible ice storm. And, uh, we didn't have school for two or three days, but then we got back to school, but you could be down here in school and you would hear a crack, 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 and then crash. Another tree went down. And it would be going on 24 hours a day. The, the trees were badly crippled when that storm was over, and the trees on the north slope seemed to fare the worst. Uh, the snow kept accumulating, the ice uh, kept accumulating and didn't get filled it off. And those marks are on the older trees today and a lot of the lumbering that's been done in this area on hardwoods like maple, uh, it left its mark in the quality of the timber. 
this area is a pretty productive area as far as growing good hardwood timber. Um, there's some other things that uh, I recall as I was walking around the school each year some wildflowers in the back of the school it used to get up about this high or a little higher and they had a yellow blossom on very prolific very nice looking as far as i was concerned and uh, right next to them there was a fine uh, well, plant that grew up they had these little seeds on them in a pod what they call them touch me not how many know what a touch me not is well there's a few here know what a touch me we had lots of them down here around the school. And that about when school opened by they were right there to be touched. <laughs> There's lots of things that uh, as I look back are amusing that went on at that time and I think we got a halfway decent education that wasn't all out of books. We had teachers that would take us out on a little field trip once in a while, either spring, arbor day or something. I remember one that up here in Charlie Cook's woods. And, uh, we hadn't gone in very far and the partridge bird flew out. That scared us to death. You know, they, they got real fast and kind of a whistle to them. So we began to look around and we found a nest full of spotted eggs right there. And uh, we were told to leave them alone. And that was one of our observations that I remember on that little walking tour. In winter time, one of the things we did is we noticed there's a real steep bank on the other side of the school ground down here, and there's a spring at the bottom. And the spring has been kind of dammed up now, but it used to be free flowing and quite a stream of water, and the old trout would come up into there and go up and under the bank and spawn. Well, in the winter time, that served as a source of water that we could carry up the hill and pour down the track where we wanted to. Go right downhill. Boy, that stepped, stepped the speed right up. <laughs> One of the things that uh, I remember riding on, we got a board about six feet long and half block of wood, nailed it on there, sit on there, right downhill. Down the bottom is a little ditch, and it jumped right up in the air, come down. And come to school one day, and it wasn't around anymore. Well. Charlie Cook across the road took great concern about what was going on and he thought somebody was going to kill himself, so he went and confiscated it out. That's, these are just little things that stick in my mind, but we did get a decent education out of uh, what we learned with our experiences at home. Uh, we had chores to do. And, uh, working together in the, in the school. Uh, I think we did pretty good. If anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them. Thank you all. <laughs> Anyone else got a few words of reflection in the past you'd like to share? Before I forget, uh, our neighbor here, Chuck Winship from Sugarbush Hollow, has a display of his products over here, and I believe they're for sale. Anyone interested? Uh, in, in, uh, after we're done here, can take a look at the display over here. It's, it's, uh, East Springwater Maple Products. Chuck Carl, Alex. That's just a display, Carl. It's just a display. You don't have anything for sale? We're not going to sell today. Okay. <laughs> Right. You can always get it on the front of the staff. Right. If you want to serve it's on the front of the staff. He has a he has a farm right up here on the Party Hollow Road. It's the old Tyler farm, uh, more recently owned by Dick Curtis. But uh, Chuck has that. That's his uh, sugar bush. Mm. So uh, if you do want some of these, these, these products up there for sale, I would like to thank the committee for uh, helping put this on. We have a, a committee of several couples that get together every year to arrange this. And next year's date, is it's always the first Sunday in August, so it will be August 7th next year. We'll put that date on your calendar. August 7th. Uh,
this time I'd like to introduce my daughter and my son-in-law, Rob and Sarah Parker. It's our entertainment. And uh, they're going to do some mm -hmm. entertainment and we're going to have some door prizes, so please stick around for that and, and also dessert. We can sample so much up when she has syrup on that dessert. Uh, I want to share with you a couple of uh, a couple of my sorry I need to come up here and share this with me. There's uh, sometimes misunderstandings happen in your home. Oh, this one happened for a church camp, and it was something like this. Very proper lady uh, began planning a week's uh, camping vacation for her and her Baptist church group. She wrote to the campground for reservations. She wanted to make sure that the campground was fully equipped and modern, but couldn't bring herself to write the word toilet in her letter. So she decided on the old-fashioned word, bathroom canode. But once written down, she was not comfortable with that either. Finally, she decided on the abbreviation VC and wrote this letter. Does your campground have its own VC? When the campground owner received the letter, he couldn't figure out what VC meant. So he showed it to several of the campers, one of whom suggested that the lady was obviously referring to the Baptist church, since there was a Baptist church on the letterhead of the letter. So, dear madam, he replied and back in return to this lady, the BC is located nine miles from the campground in a beautiful grove of trees. <laughs> I admit it is quite a distance if you're in the habit of going regularly. <laughs> no doubt you'll be pleased to know that it will seat 350 comfortably. <laughs> and it's open Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. <laughs> Some folks like to come and make a day of it and bring them lunch. <laughs> The acoustics are good, so everyone can hear the quietest passages. It may interest you to know that my daughter met her husband there. We're also having a fundraiser to purchase new seats, as the old ones are wonderful. Unfortunately, my wife is ill and not been able to attend regularly. It's been a good six months since she last went. It pains her very much not to be able to go more often. But as we grow older, it seems to be more of an effort, especially in colder weather. Perhaps I could accompany you the first time you go, sit with you, and introduce you to all the other folks. I'm looking forward to your visit. Campground. Yeah. Misunderstanding, amen? amen? Yeah. My wife is now going to come up. Uh, speaking of misunderstandings, uh, my wife and I met, uh, I don't know, how old was I? 12? You were like 15. So you're just a couple years older than I am. Uh, back in church at the, uh, at the Nazarene Church, uh, I don't know, 1980 something. We're talking about vintage stuff, so we'll go back to when we met. Uh, in those days, I had an infatuation with uh, this beautiful lady here next to me. And uh, I'm sure it wasn't mutual at that time because it wasn't cool to like somebody three years younger than you, and and uh, especially when you're the girl, right? So it was really cool for me, but maybe not cool for you. Uh, my wife ended up going off to, to Boston uh, to college at Eastern Nazarene College. And uh, pretty much from there, this song will pretty much sum up uh, maybe a, a humorous way we got together. Enjoy, if you can. <laughs> signed up for the door prize. Did everyone sign a ticket on the way in for the door prize? Uh, the buckets. I need the buckets. We have some nice door prizes. Yes, 
pictures of East Springwater bear here. That, that were taken right here in East Springwater, uh, Kitchen Corners Road. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to pass this around. I'll be out there now. <laughs> nice pictures. <laughs> seems, uh, seems like you like bird feeders. 7 o'clock in the morning. It was taken. 7 in the morning. Recently? Um, this one is two years ago. Two years ago. But I had others since. So he's two years bigger by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to pass these around. We have some nice door prizes here. And at this time, we have a prize for the, um, for the oldest person here. Who thinks they qualify for the oldest person here? Gerald, he's here every year. <laughs> he's not getting any younger. <laughs> How old are you, Gerald? 90? 90? 93 in October. 93 in October. Can anyone else challenge that? <laughs> Karen, could you deliver the prizes for me, please? Congratulations, Gerald, with being the oldest. We also have a prize for the youngest. Uh-oh. He's asleep. The youngest. A baby. Who's the youngest? Right there. Noah. That's for sure. Can anyone check? How old is Noah? Five weeks. Five weeks old. <laughs> Can anyone challenge that? I don't think so. Thank you. It's not a pair of socks either. Okay, we have one for the person who traveled the furthest to get here today. We have some of Chuck Winship's Sugarbush Hollow Maple Syrup. Who do you think traveled the furthest? I know my sister came from Florida. Has anyone been any further than Florida? Come here today. You have a hand over there. Not today. Not today. Oh, wow. Congratulations. You get the serve. It's right in front of my house. It's dumb. It's right in front of my house. It's dumb. It's right in front of my house. It's dumb. It's right in front of my house. It's dumb. It's right in front of my house. It's dumb. It's right in front of my house. I guess I won't complain about my squirrels. <laughs> no, no. Yes, you do. That's a good kid. Okay, we have a prize for uh, the door prize for the children. That one. Pictures. Aaron, come up here and go out to the Draw one of those. 